sports are obviously a big deal, you know, in, in life and society in general. So tonight we're going to be talking sports, soccer and softball, Clearing University, women's soccer and women's softball. It's tonight on Feedback. Good Wednesday evening to you. I'm Mark Despedagas. Welcome to Feedback. As I said on tonight's program, we're going to be talking Clare University sports. In the next segment, we're going to be speaking with Tony Howard, uh, the new coach of the new women's softball program. That is in the next segment. And then later in the program, we're, we're going to be speaking with Ron Baum, uh, the women's softball coach. That's coming up later. Um, but as is my job, I think, in the first segment, I always like to tell you about something I've read, something I've seen that kind of caught my eye. I don't have the article with me, but something that, that's, uh, that caught my eye uh, two, three, maybe four weeks ago in the New York Times, there was an article about, and like I think the sub-headline was, is college really necessary? They were profiling these uh, just recent high school graduates who were making $40,000 a year already, and in guess what industry? The high-tech industry, of course, that seems to be where it is today, but uh, they were saying how these people were making all this money right out of high school and is is college even necessary because kids seem to be educating themselves with these things well you know i read that and i thought well that, that might be a good point but i thought about it in another way you know maybe not necessarily is college necessary are we getting what we should be getting out of college you know i think college was originally designed as a way for us to continue our education to continue learning for the joy of learning well i don't think 99% of college students I talk to, maybe 95%, we'll give more than that, 95% of college students I talk to, I don't think are here for the joy of learning. I don't know if they have the joy for, for learning things. Maybe they do, and I'm just reading them wrong. I don't know. But it seems that, that people don't really care. They're here, and the, the bottom line is the grade and, and the grade point average. Um, we were talking about writing resumes. I was talking with some people the other day, and they were saying, well, should I put my grade point average on there? You know, that's a big deal. And I've never been a, a real firm believer in the whole grade point average. If you ask me what mine is, like, I honestly wouldn't know. Um, I'd have to go look it up. Like, I don't remember because it's not that important to me. The grade is not that important to me. What I leave the class with is important to me. And I think that that's, that goes back to this New York Times article, that these kids are leaving high school with a thirst for knowledge, obviously because they've learned how to do these high-tech things, they still have the thirst for knowledge in that type of industry. And I think that when people come to college, they're here just because maybe they see it, or, or a lot of times, and I'll agree with this, society sees it as a necessity in life, that we have to go to college. It's, it's very important. Obviously, I mean, you're not going to get a job, I, I don't think. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's going to be easier to get a job if you have, say, you have a college degree. So I think that people aren't realizing, you know, I, uh, my roommate's taking, I think, an English literature class, like British Lit or something, and he complains about it. Well, you know what? Why not just go in there and just learn for the sake of learning? Learn about what's going on in the world. That's how I, I think I would wish more college students would look at things. And if you're out there and you're a college student listening to me, think of it that way. Just learn just to learn about it because it's going to make you a better person. You're going to know more things. And I think maybe a lot of the older people in the community who have been out of college for maybe even a year or 10 years or 20 years might be thinking the same thing. You're like, you know what? He might be right. I'm right. That you learn these things in college and just do it for the sheer joy of learning because you know what? You're going to go out in the workforce and it's just going to be you're working all the time. You don't have a chance to learn new things. So always look out for learning. Don't just look at it as a grade. Look at, look at it as learning something new. So at this point, we're going to take a break. And we're going to talk about um, some Clarion University students. I'm sure that, that they are all people who uh, learn just to learn. The women's soccer team. We're going to be speaking with Tony Howard, the uh, coach of that team, after this on Feedback. Thank 
kid. If anyone wants to know if that girl will go out with him, pass it down. Hey, Grandma, has to go along the end if she wants to go out with this loner. The young man wants to know if the girl over there is a donor. Somebody wants to know if you're an organ and tissue donor. Yes. Hey, me too. <laughs> Are you a donor? Make sure your family knows your decision so there's no question later. It may not look like it, but you're watching the future of the Earth pass by. Because many of these products are made from materials you've been recycling. But to keep recycling working, you need to buy products that say, made from recycled materials. For all those next in line, it would mean the world to them. I'm going to make the movie or write the book. It would be a great book to have. And you can uh, call uh, to get her book. Um, you can also find it online. Well, I have a feeling I'm going to be rather opinionated. People I know. So let's ask them about scheduling. Um, why, is it, why is it that students have such a problem here? With Tune into Feedback with Mark Despotakis every Tuesday and Wednesday night beginning at 7.30 p.m. Because we're totally out of time. No time to talk to you. We'll see you tomorrow. Welcome back to Feedback. As I said, this is kind of our sports-related show today. We're talking soccer in this segment. Tony Howard uh, joins us, the not only the new soccer coach, but the coach of the new soccer program. Uh, you know, why do we have soccer now here at Clarion? Uh, soccer's so big nationally and internationally, for the women especially. And to start a women's soccer program here in the area was a very logical idea. Mm -hmm. It was very, uh, very strong in the athletic department's behalf to, to do that because it is a, a strong participation sport. And amongst our PSAC contenders and, and our conference uh, opponents, uh, there are five or six right now that are in the top 25 in the country. So it made logical sense mm -hmm. for them to add women's soccer and to also uh, give credit to Pennsylvania for being a very, very strong soccer area. When I first read about this, I heard about that they were adding this last year. Um, I heard that it was a club sport. What, what does that mean? Does that mean it's different from, you know, like volleyball or tennis in any way? Well, we're taking it in this year as kind of a developmental year. It gives okay. us an opportunity, gives me an opportunity since I was hired on so late uh, in this position to be able to really take a year, really eight and a half months, to really get yourself focused and get yourself an opportunity to really recruit some good high class mm -hmm. caliber athletes that will be able to come in. Uh, we're fortunate right now with the situation at school uh, with having the, the students that are already here and the freshmen that came in that I had no knowledge of, that I actually have about a dozen that can really make an impact mm. for next year, which uh, I'm very ecstatic about. So when actually is the season? Is, is it a fall sport, spring sport? When are you actually playing your games? Well, our traditional season is in the fall. Uh, all NCAA schools play in the fall. The spring becomes more of a non-traditional season where you get five opportunities to play more games. And we play a lot of seven-a-side games, and we'll play also some full-length games. But to keep the... Uh, keep budget concerns down. We, we try to stay as local as we can during that spring season. But as we become in our fall season of 2001 for our real year, uh, our first year at Intercollegiate NCAA Division II, uh, we will get out and about and try to get ourselves some travel opportunity and also play in our, our conference opponents. So you're actually going to be playing games this fall then, right? This fall we have a limited schedule. Right now I've got anywhere, uh, I've got nine games with another one possibility of a one pending. We're playing five of those at North Clarion High School. And then we're playing all the rest uh, between Ohio, West Virginia, and here, Pennsylvania. Okay, so it's not too far, and, and I'm sure people can you know find out where the when oh, exactly. the games are. Well, the uh, the schedule is posted on a website right now. Okay. It's on our soccer website. If uh, you go into the athletic website, um, the Clarion University, you'll be able to see that our schedule is up there. There's two games that need to be updated, but that'll be updated within the week. So people can go out and right. um, support the team. Did you find that there was? 
a lot of interest in this. You know, pretty much as a student, we first heard about this toward the end of, of the spring semester. Was there a lot of interest over the summer? Um, and how much were you able to gauge? You know, when were you actually hired on? Uh, when I was hired on was very, very late. Uh, was, we were talking very close to uh, the end of August, uh, the beginning of August, excuse me, the end of July when uh, things were starting to speculate and things came to a head a little bit more. When I came out here, uh, school was convinced, I was convinced, and we all made it a happy medium right at that time when I was out here on my visit uh, to go ahead and make it a go. And I was very pleased with the community and, and things that I'd heard with uh, our athletic director, Bob Carlson, had said uh, in the developmental stages of what we're trying to do for the future of the program, building a brand new field that's happening right now as we speak. The grass is, is rooting in right as we, at this moment. And things are looking real good as, as far as getting our name uh, notar you know, notary right. everywhere. And I've gotten the opportunity to get in with the, in touch with many, many schools all throughout the throughout the country, basically, to let us know uh, with my strong connections, people I know, and letting them know about our program. So uh, the word is catching on pretty strong and pretty fast. And when it did come about, um, you know, I knew about this uh, back, I'd say, some months ago, back in um, about Mayish, about May. Mm -hmm. I think that was some time when they started uh, coming up with the idea that yes, they wanted to do it and they were going to do it right. They weren't going to rush into it into the PSAC right away because it wouldn't have been any uh, successful following for us. So we may have had a couple squeakers here and there, but uh, it's a better process for us to really have that year to be able to mm -hmm. get ourselves in there. And I uh, actually, this past weekend, I went to Shippensburg, had a chance to watch Lock Haven and Chip play, and uh, we, we found out what our best competition is probably going to be mm -hmm. like, which is Lock Haven. And Lock Haven is a very good program. They've been around for a long time. So it's for us to, to build this thing in, in just a couple years right. is going to be good. Uh, to win the conference right away is going to be very tough, but it's, it's definitely possible. So because of the caliber of talent, we're going to be able to take away from those schools, the Edinburghs, the Slips, mm -hmm. all those guys uh, throughout our conference that are very strong, uh, we'll be able to have a chance to recruit against them. So what's going on immediately? You know, what, what do you have going on right now? You know, do you, are you having a lot of practices? You know, what, what's going on with the team? At the moment, we're trying to focus on two to three practices a week. Uh, taking that into a developmental stage of getting our game play in. Game's going to start September 26th. That'll be in the evening at 5 p.m. at North Clarion High School. It'll be our first game, and I'll be against Mercyhurst College Northeast. And then as we start progressing from there, uh, we have two weeks off to prepare for that time to build into uh, pretty much every weekend. We'll have a Saturday-Sunday game, Saturday-Sunday game, all the way out to the end of October. So what, what, let's talk about the makeup of the team. Is there you know, more freshmen than seniors? What, what, how does the team look in that way? Did you find that a lot of freshmen were coming in who maybe didn't even know that this is the first year to yeah. this? It's surprising that there's a good balance between, mm. between the both because I do have um, a good few seniors that played back in their days uh, three years ago or such, and now they're giving it a go here and they're mm. very excited about that. But they're, on the bad side of that is they're almost finished and they're, mm -hmm. they know they're just going to be able to help us catapult this thing. But there are a lot of high-impacting freshmen, which is great. Um, then, I'll, then the nucleus would be sophomore, junior, which will be around for two to three years, depending on if they stay out mm -hmm. that fifth year. But there are some that um, really are going to make an impact for us right away as freshmen, coming out, just coming right out of high school right now, knowing that we didn't, they didn't even know we were going to have a soccer program. They had heard there's a possibility of it, and uh, they really came because of the educational sense, but this was the bonus. Right. Uh, one more time, recap, when is the first game that we can come out and see? September 26th. That'll okay. be at 5 p.m. at North Clarion North High School. Yep. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Best of luck to you sure. in this season. Best of luck to the team. I appreciate it. Thanks we'll a lot. We'll be back right after this on Feedback. Know that girl go out with him, pass it down. Hey, Grandma, has to go along the end if she wants to go out with this loner. The young man wants to know if the girl over there is a donor. Somebody wants to know if you're an organ and tissue donor. Yes. Hey, me too. <laughs> Are you a donor? Make sure your family knows your decision so there's no question later. Do you think you have the power to change the world? I can shape the future, one child at a time. I know 
I can make a difference in those children's lives, and I know I have. Who knows where my influence may stop? I teach. I teach. I teach. Yes, they're teachers, but to the kids they reach, they're heroes. I think I have the power to change the world. The influence is always there. Do you have the power to wake up young minds, to be someone's hero, to change someone's life? Reach for that power. Teach. If you want to make an impact on our future, call 1-800-45-TEACH. Want to change the world? I teach. I teach. I teach. I teach. I teach. Be a teacher. Be a hero. When other stations are showing their boring programming, only one station is bringing news coverage closer to home. Now a story you'll hear first on five. Every Tuesday and Wednesday night at 8 p.m., join the area's news leader, TV5 News. Tune in for the latest in local, regional, state, and national news. Plus, with our newspaper exchange partner, the Clarion News, teaming up to bring news coverage closer to home every Tuesday and Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Welcome back to Feedback. Um, as is the case when you're doing television, spontaneity is the thing. Uh, Ron Baum, the softball coach, um, has not at this point shown up for the show. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try to reschedule him um, for another show. Hopefully he can join us then. But we have pulled an interview we did last year. You may have seen it with Jason from MTV's The Real World. Take a look. Seem to be listening. That was, you know, it's cool. You know, some colleges you go to, people are, you know, sort of spacing off. You know, not paying any attention. Kind of rude. People are sweet here. Uh, I haven't seen much of the town, um, except for uh, some bar. What was it called? <laughs> Loomis. The Loomis. I saw the Loomis. Looks like the lobby of a Holiday Inn to me. <laughs> but we, uh, I haven't seen much of the town. But it's small. You know, it's a quaint little. Pennsylvania town, you know, yeah. it's pretty picturesque, kind of what I imagined it looking like. Um, about this lecture series, uh, you know, what's, what's, the, what's the message you're trying to get across to students, uh, you know, not specifically in this one, but in all this, uh, the series? It depends, it depends on the lecture. Sometimes it's more just a question and answer where they ask me about, you know, the show, how to get on the show, uh, what was the show like, you know, and those are, those are simple. Some lectures you go to, um, it's an anti-drug message, or you know, it's a, not really so much an anti-drug message, but a discussion about drug activity, right. you know, and usage. Because um, you know, there's no way I'm going to go to a college and say, "Hey, don't do drugs," you know, because that's just not. Like, no one's going to listen to that, you know. You can only talk about the reality of the situation um, and various things, you know, volunteerism. I've done lectures on that before, um, and so it really depends on what the college really wants you to talk about. My, my ex expertise <laughs> is, uh, uh, since I counseled in rehabs and stuff like that, I go and I talk a lot about you know, drugs and uh, what they can do to you and uh, what I've dealt with with my friends and stuff like that. Uh, moving on to the show, what ever made you want to go onto this, this, this show? I mean, I, I, a lot of people, I guess, do, but it seems like kind of a very strange thing to do to have these people, cameras follow mm. you around for for several days. What made you want to do it? I was bored. <laughs> I was just bored. I mean, there's no other answer to that. I was just tired of the situation I was in, and uh, I couldn't see any other way out, and I was given the chance to go on national television, you know, and be famous for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's really kind of all I saw at the beginning, you know, you see the impending fame and, uh, and the short, it's very short-lived, you know, and it's pretty fleeting. But it's still a kick, you know, it's still kind of fun. Um, and it's, it was a change, and I got to go live in a house for free, you know, and kind of see what the entertainment industry is like, you know, and test out the waters. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I was, you know, working at a movie theater, you know. I was doing a crappy job, bored, and I wanted to change my situation. So I just took the chance. It was offered me. Having cameras follow you around all day, I think that would be just... Very strange. You know, I heard that, I guess it's somewhere in Switzerland, like there's a model living in a glass house now, and the whole country's like standing there watching her every move. I think that's kind of like what 
this show is, what is that like to have these cameras follow you around all day? It's really an odd concept. There's a woman living in a glass house. Yes, and, I, I, and you, you see her get up, and she goes to the bathroom, and you see all of this. And because they, they're, I think they were testing it, they're calling it art. It's interesting. Um, I'd say the real world's pretty similar to that, with the exception of it's not, there's a delay. Right. You know, there's not the immediate gratification of seeing us right then and there. But there's the, uh, there's the edited version of that live, same live thing, you know? Right. Right. What do you think about it when you see it? Are you happy with how you've been portrayed sometimes? Sometimes I'm happy with it. What's up with that? Sometimes I'm happy with it, other times I'm not, you know? It's, it's, it really depends on... The only thing that I could say I was genuinely dishap dishappy with, unhappy with, would be the fact that they really, they, t they tend to typecast the mm -hmm. cast members. Uh, you know, you become one thing and that's that's kind of what they concentrate you know on your personality and having written for the show it's really hard not to do that because you need to create characters for the audience to associate with and you're dealing with the average age of the watcher um the the demographic is 13 to 33 you know but really a lot of our viewers are young you know and their attention span in 1999 97 98 99 2000 it's just getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. So there's lots of quick cuts. So you need to create a, characters that are defined, which is limiting, but that's, that's the nature of the show. That's what the show is. Uh, it's, not, it's not, you know, it's not behind the music. You know, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not History Channel. It's not biography. It's MTV. Right. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's bubblegum, you know? And sometimes you get a little deep here and there when you get, you know, you get a good... Like real world, uh, road real semester at sea, you know, we're going to Africa, you know, and doing something deep like that, like going to where Mandela was held in prison. You get to show the audience something worthwhile and right. worth writing for, which I enjoy. But in the majority of the time, we're just showing people screaming at one another, you know, and people love that. They eat it up. Mm -hmm. You know, people in bikinis, guys with their shirts off. You know, it's not a deep show. It's just entertainment, you know, and it's quick cuts and, and uh, catchphrases and, and, and typecasted personalities. And that's just what it is. Listening to you talking there, I heard you say once that I should have edited myself there. How much did you find yourself maybe editing yourself because you didn't want other people that you were living with or maybe people you knew mm. outside of the whole real world thing think, you know? I think it became an unconscious process that I did all the time. Right. I think that I at first was very conscious of it and then I just wouldn't talk about certain things. That mm -hmm. in daily life I would, I would discuss openly um, but there were things that I just got to the point that I wouldn't talk. I, de I decided not to talk about people in my sh on my show behind their backs as much as possible mm -hmm. because I didn't want to be that guy. I didn't want to be that guy who yapped about somebody but didn't have the balls to walk up to him and tell him myself. So I tried to tell everybody what I thought, you know, but that's hard to do, you know, it's a process. So, uh, yeah. So where do you go from here? I heard talk maybe doing a reunion. But uh, where do you personally go? Me personally, I've, I formed my own internet company. I formed a company called www.1thenumber1fortheroad.com, and it's an internet travel show where we do, uh, we travel for a month at a time, and we, we cover, it's kind of like Charles Kuralt. I don't know if any of your viewers know who Charles Kuralt is. He did a segment on CBS um, back in the day, and uh, he'd go out and go to small towns, and he would interview people, and he would just get, you know, small town stories. We do something similar to that, but we have themes to our show. Like the last theme was haunted houses and hotels across America. And so we covered for a month, we stayed, every night we stayed in a haunted house or hotel, hmm. um, traveling from San Francisco to New Orleans. And we did it live over the internet. And you know, we got close to 750,000 hits in wow. a month, you know. That so sounds we, really we, interesting. We, we yeah. kicked some butt. And uh, I've, got a, um, I've got a role in a film starting uh, in May. Uh, I've got a role on a film called The Private Public. I'm going to begin filming and, uh, on like May 1st. Wow. So. All right. Seems like interesting. You have a lot of stuff to keep yourself busy then. Uh, uh, man, I'm going to be, the next year is going to be cool, but it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of work. But I'm looking forward to it. I'd rather be working a lot, doing stuff that I like, than selling insurance or something <laughs> like that, you know? All right. Thanks for joining us. And yes, thanks, Jason. Okay, from Jason from MTV's The Real World, an interview I did with him earlier in the year. It's kind of interesting, too. I was talking about in there the woman living in, like, the glass house. What did we have? He had Survivor all summer. That was the big craze. So kind of interesting that that's sort of taken over television in America.
But uh, we'll be back right after this on Feedback with a Final Word. with Mark Despotakis every Tuesday and Wednesday night beginning at 7.30 p.m. Because we're totally out of time, no time to talk to you. We'll see you tomorrow. It may not look like it, but you're watching the future of the Earth pass by because many of these products are made from materials you've been recycling. But to keep recycling working, you need to buy products that say made from recycled materials. For all those next in line, it would mean the world to them. Welcome back to Feedback. I'm Mark Despotakis. Uh, once again, we'd like to thank Tony Howard, uh, the new soccer coach, for joining us. The new soccer team, go out and support them. You know, they're going to be playing their games out at North, Car North Clarion um, High School. Go out there, um, see those games, support that team. That's going to be an up-and-coming collegiate sport here at Clarion University. Um, as for Ron Baum from the softball team, we're going to try to get in contact with him, try to have him back on here uh, later in the season. He is the new softball coach. Um, so, but I hope you enjoyed the Jason from MTV's The Real World. Uh, next week, so far, what we have, we're going to be talking with the Historical Society. We're going to maybe talk a little bit about what you can go and see down there. Also, kind of what's the, um, what's, what's going on down there in the future, sort of. You know, you can, what, what's, what, what are the exhibits coming down there? Maybe a little bit of Clarion's past. So, that's what we have for feedback for this week. The news is next. Make sure you stay tuned for that. Thank you for joining us. Have a good week. Thank <laughs> you.